Today's story is Those Shoes by Maribeth Boletz. I have a dream about those shoes. Black high tops, two white stripes, cool shoes. Grandma, I want those. There's no room for want around here, just need. Grandma says, and what you need is new boots for winter. Brandon T. comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now. Not me. I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom. Seven times in one day. Just so we can walk up and down the hall in those shoes. Next, Alan, Jacob, and Terrence each get a pair of those shoes. Then one day, in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey says the guidance counselor. He brings out a box of shoes and the other stuff that he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are my size. Velcro. Like the ones my little cousin wears. They have an animal on them. From a cartoon I don't think any kid my age has ever even watched. And when I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacobs takes one look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes and laughs. And so does Terrence and Brandon T. and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and I turn my back. I'm not going to cry about any dumb shoes. But when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes. My grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes that you were wanting so much. I got a little bit of money set aside. Might be enough. You never know. At the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over so that she can check the price. And when she sees it, Oh, she sits down heavily. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I said. Grandma shakes her head. Then I remember the thrift store. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and he had to give one of them away? We ride the bus to the first thrift stop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoe except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift store. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner at the third thrift store, and I see something. Something in the window. Black shoes. Two white stripes. High tops. Perfect shape. $2.50 for... Those shoes? <gasps> my heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes. I hitch up my boogie, baggy socks. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes, just to get my heel in. I don't know. I think they fit. Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toes at the end of the shoes. Oh, Jeremy, she says. I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I said, holding my breath and praying that my toes will not fall off right then and there. But my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyways with my own money and I squeeze them on and I limp to the bus stop. At home, a few days later, 
Grandma pulls a new pair of snow boots in my closet box and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I said. Grandma, give me a hug. I check every day, but those shoes did not stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfreys to school instead. And one day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up. His feet look smaller than mine. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio's there. He's the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfrey's shoes. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoes smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think, no, I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I keep thinking, nope, I am not going to do it. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it, I say. Well, what? Do what? Says Antonio, breathing hard. Oh, nothing. Grandma calls me in for supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear those shoes? Antonio asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing for those shoes. That night, I'm awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door. I push the doorbell and I run away. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at my Mr. Alfrey's shoes. But later, when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere, there's snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall. Then I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots. New black boots that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, Thanks. I smile and I give him a nudge. Let's go race. The end.